Hello there, this is Father Ken Lau, and welcome to part two of my interview with Therese Clark. And uh, as I do this uh, series called Conversion Stories. So welcome again uh, in this interview, Therese. Hello, Father Ken. Okay, good. So uh, two months ago, uh, so I received this email from Therese, and uh, she identified herself as a Catholic detective. So Therese, can you, can you share why you call yourself a Catholic detective? Well, sure. Um, like I had mentioned in the first interview, much of what I heard about Catholicism was from a non-Catholic point of view, or even as far as an anti-Catholic point of view. And as far as my opinion was concerned, I was neutral. I wasn't anti-Catholic by any means, but I thought, you know, I'm hearing a lot of people talk about the Catholic Church, and a lot of these people have never even been to a Mass before. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I'm just going to go straight to the source of information. So I went on YouTube to find some videos. Um, Catholic Answers is also a really good website. Um, going back to YouTube, I found some really helpful videos from Catholic Truth. Um, mm -hmm. And that's run by Brian Mercier, mm -hmm. and he's really good. Um, I've also found some really good videos from Steve Ray, and oh, yeah. he's mm -hmm. he's also a Catholic convert. He came yeah. from a uh -huh. Baptist background, and he converted when he was in his um, when he was in his late thirties. So it was back in nineteen ninety four, I think. Mm -hmm. And then I've also found uh, Keith Nestor. He's okay. also mm -hmm. he's also a Protestant who mm -hmm. converted to Catholicism later in life. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've just consulted with my two friends that I traveled over to France with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just I've been going to mass myself since like December time frame. It was like right around Christmas. Wow. Was there any like aha moments for you? Uh, like maybe three aha moments for you uh, as you cool. discover more of the Catholic faith? So the first aha moment was about Mary and the saints. And I had always wondered, well, why do the Catholics involve Mary and saints? I don't understand that. And then I've also heard it said, well, Catholics worship Mary and the saints. So I decided to look into it, going to Catholic Answers and some of the other websites that I mentioned, like the videos on YouTube. And I discovered that's not the case at all. There's no worship. And your mm -hmm. catechism clearly states that worship is reserved for God alone. Mm -hmm. But yeah. as far as Mary is concerned, she does play a special role. God saved her in advance. She needed a savior just like everyone else, but she was saved in advance to bear the son of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we look, the Catholics look to her as an intercessor. It would be no different from me asking one of my dear friends in Christ to pray for me in my time of need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so it's the same thing. And like with saints and saints, there are saints for different things. And it would just be like somebody who can relate to the issues that we're having. Like I might talk to somebody here on earth who has dealt with a certain issue. They may have a lot of insight and they mm -hmm. would pray for me. And yeah. so it's the same for, it's, it's no different than Mary and the saints. Uh, the second one is the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. And that was the biggest aha case that I cracked as a Catholic mm -hmm. detective. And growing up, I just viewed the bread and the wine, or in some cases, it's grape juice, as just mere symbols, symbolizing the body and the blood of Christ. But when I read John chapter six, in the 50 verses that make mm -hmm. up the bread of life discourse, I thought, okay, there is definitely more mm -hmm. than just mere symbolism. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. Jesus 
was driving it home to the Jews and some other disciples that he's the true manna. He is the true food and drink. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he said, unless you eat of my body and drink of my blood, you will have no life in you. And the Jews and some of the other disciples, they could not accept that. And they were grumbling amongst themselves. And Jesus actually asked them, does this offend you? Are mm -hmm. you offended by this? Mm -hmm. And the Jews and some of those disciples, they walked away and they no longer walked with him anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, then, and, and, and he didn't stop them, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. He didn't stop them. He said, no, no, it's, it's, I'm only just speaking in <laughs> symbolic terms. Come back, come back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Full. Wow. You know very well the, the, the teachings of the Catholic Church and the, and, and the Eucharist. So what's the third aha moment for the you? The third aha moment was discovering that sola fide. Which what's sola fide? which means um, faith alone, and that's a key tenet in Protestantism, is not really accurate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I will preface it by saying that, yes, we are absolutely 100% saved by grace mm -hmm. and faith. True faith. No question. Mm -hmm. No question about that at all. At the same time, though, works are very important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can't have one without the other. Yes. We're not saved mm -hmm. by works, but we are saved for good works. And because of that faith, we need to live that out. Mm -hmm. And if I could share a verse, if I may, sure, that really... Sure, sure that really just drove this point home. And I know there's many others, but for the sake of time, I'll just confine it to this one passage. It's James, excuse me, James chapter two, 22 through 26. It says, you see that faith was active along with his works and faith was completed by works. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way, was not also Rahab the harlot justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so faith apart from works is dead. Yeah, we will be judged by love, right? And uh, exactly. our works uh, should show our love and our work should be the fruit of our faith. You know, so beautiful. Uh, that's one thing about I like about our like uh, Protestant brothers and sisters. Uh, you're more well versed in the in the scripture. So I hope uh, for us Catholics will will grow in learning more about about the Bible. Okay, so online viewers, watch out for part three of this interview. Again, Therese. It's okay. an honor. Thank you, Father Ken. Okay, so be a living saint. Jesus, Mary, Joseph, we trust in you.